Um, many of you probably are familiar, and it's wonderful to hear about the ongoing, continued relationship with Jackson Christian High School. I'm still the new one being here only uh, about a year now, but it's been wonderful to get to know Jackson Christian, the community, and uh, Mr. Barsoon. So with that said, I'd like to invite him up, and why don't we give them a warm welcome before we get getting, and uh, we'll leave it to them to, to start. Usually I like to roam the aisle. I'm not used to kind of being tied down to a microphone. Um, yeah, so it's good to be here. We appreciate you guys having us. I, you know, this was one of the original churches that we did with the Royal Players back in 1988. Um, so we've been on tour that long. Maybe someday they'll let us go home. Um, that was a joke. But I always feel very welcome here, and I, I know so many of you um, that attend this church from various things and always feel very welcome. Can I tell you a story? And, and at first you might be thinking, how is this relevant to anything? I don't know either, but we'll find out when we get to the end. But my, my wife was gone yesterday afternoon to uh, kind of a reunion with a bunch of her college friends. They get together a couple of times every year, and yeah, they've been out of college a long time. Um, don't tell her I said that. One of her friends has done short-term missions in uh, Eastern Europe and told uh, the rest of the girls a story, the rest of the ladies, a story um, that she had heard about uh, Operation Christmas Child. You guys participate, right? And apparently there was a real mix-up and a mess because we live in a broken world and a whole huge, I mean, tens of thousands of Christmas uh, of the boxes, you know, the shoe boxes, got mishandled and mislaid and they were delivered three months late um, and you're like, oh my word, you know, totally missed Christmas, totally bombed that. What a mess. They, yeah, they arrived three months late in a country called Moldova, just in time for tens of thousands of Ukrainians coming across the border. And they were able to give those children a shoebox as they came to freedom, as they escaped from Russian tyranny give them a shoebox that reminds them that the ultimate freedom is in Jesus Christ. Is God in control, people? Now, I don't mean this to sound harsh, but are your children going to hear that in school tomorrow? And don't get me wrong, I'm thankful for all the Christian teachers, my colleagues, in schools all across this nation who are Christians and are loving their students and praying for them and teaching so much from God's word implicitly. But at Jackson Christian School, we're able to do that explicitly. To teach young people that God is in control and that the foundation and the center of life is Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. We operate from a worldview that says that the Bible is God's word and his ultimate truth and that Jesus Christ should have the preeminence in all things. That's what Jackson Christian is about. Yes, quality education, absolutely. We have embedded dual enrollment classes to where a student can finish JCS with their first year of college done, sitting right in their own classrooms. We have financial aid. Don't ever say, oh, I can't afford it. Remember, God is in control. Yeah, we have all those things, but really, the essence of Jackson Christian is a worldview that in every discipline and in every class is emphasizing that Jesus Christ is Lord. If that's something that you would be interested for your children, we'd love to talk with you. Well, this morning, Royal Players are here, and we're here to present a program called Nothing But the Blood. We've already sang a little bit this morning, haven't we, about what Christ has done for us. You know, we're forgiven and we stand accepted before God because of the blood of Christ. God doesn't just forgive us because he loves us, although he does love us. That's why he provided Christ. But he doesn't just say, oh, that's okay, and forget about it when we've done wrong. It's not like your grandma. Your grandma's going to love you no matter what, right? Excuse me, ma'am, your, your grandson's a serial murderer. I don't care. That's my boy. That's what your grandma, that's, but no. God loves us and forgives us and accepts us because our sins have been taken and put on the cross. They're under the blood. 
And we have nothing when we come before God. We have no righteousness of our own. We have nothing but the blood. That's our message this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the royal players, and nothing but the blood. House lights, please.
He took the blood of calves, gathered water, scarlet wool, and branches of hyssop, and sprinkled the scroll and all the people. He said, This is the blood of the covenant, which God has commanded you to keep. In the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and everything used in its ceremonies. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. that they 
you need in return. That's why I came up with an idea that will solve all of our problems. Do you explain them to see a therapist? Mom, I'm being serious. So am I. I'll get it. This is ridiculous. I mean, look at this. Half the stuff we sold at the house. Well, Mom, look at this. I got flowers. I wonder who they're from. Oh, there's a card. To a terrific person. There's no name. There's no name. Must be a secret admirer. There must be some type of mistake. I'll just call the florist. Why? To see who sent them. Why do you have to know? So I can return the favor. Nancy, someone sent you flower, flowers simply because they think you're a terrific person. Why can't you accept that? I know it was a list. It'd be just like you to do something like this. Nancy, you're not listening to me. Well, I'll just call the florist. All right, I sent them. What? You did not. I did too. Why? Nancy, I got the receipt in my wallet. I'll prove it to you. You said that? Yeah, sorry to disappoint. <sighs> Williams, Williams. Ah, Dino Williams. You got me in there too? Well, of course. Forget <laughs> it, forget <laughs> it. I'm throwing these things out. Mom, don't be ridiculous. Ridiculous? I'm not being ridiculous. I just don't want you to feel obligated to return the favor or to even the score. I give you something simply because I love you. And I love you too, Mom. I was just surprised. Now how about you put these beautiful flowers in some water for me? What? Please? Oh, all right, but I'm only doing it because I love you. I know. They know the little bit of Five. <laughs> June 14th. Vacation? Because she loves me. Over there? 
Yeah, what do they call your name? Boy, I haven't had this many butterflies since I sang solo in first grade. Well, I'm ready. What's that? My insurance. I don't think you can take it in with me. Oh, I'm not taking it with me. I'm just taking it far enough to get to that door. Oh. I grabbed as much as I could, you know. Don't have much time. I didn't have any. Gotta get prepared. Let's take good places. I'll remember that for next time. <laughs> so, uh, what you got in the bag? My portfolio, so to speak. I accumulated quite an impressive collection. For example, this plaque was given to me for my help building shelters for poor. And this photo album contains all the children my husband and I have sponsored over the years. This is Esteban. He's from the Domin Dominican Republic. We made it possible for him to go to school. And these kids, well, I never really met them, but they ate a meal every day due to our financial support. And this kid, we were foster parents for him for a while. Wow. I coached a little league baseball for 12 years. For many Christmases, I helped raise money for the Salvation Army at 37 miles. I led the United Way effort at my work for three years. Oh, I saved a kid from drowning in Lake Michigan. I memorized the most verses at Vacation Bible School. And I made my mother the prize winning pot holder at Girl Scouts. Is that it? Oh no, I've got a lot more, but I don't want to bore you. Well, Gloria, you must say you've lived quite a life. Yeah, it just kills me I won't be able to do more. <laughs> Literally speaking, of course, so remind me. Well, what else did you want to do? Are you kidding? How old are you? 30, 31, 33. Well, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. I was just in the prime of my life. I was just catching my stride. Tony Garcia, Ezekiel Zangali. Apparently, our time is enough. It wasn't enough. What I accomplished, I mean. Although, who knows who's done enough? Why aren't they calling on me? Must be a busy day. Yeah. So, where's your stuff? My stuff? Yeah, you know, your trophies. Oh, I don't have any. None? Well, none that I brought with me. I'm sorry to hear that. Really, this is pretty difficult for you to get in. What makes you say that? Well, there's a price for admission. Well, Rory, maybe that would hurt. The price has already been paid. It's been my experience that you can never really trust anybody. So as far as me and my bag go, I'm not leaving home without it. No wonder you got a heart attack. Serena Jenkins, Senate Premier, Sue Cummings. Oh, that's me! That's me! You, hey, wait a minute. I've been here for hours. You just got here. It was very nice to meet you, Rory. There's gotta be some mistake. I wish you the best, really. Well, mention that I'm still here and tell them about my bag. That'll impress them. Thomas White, John Mariano, Anika Friesma, Andrew McIntyre, Ricardo Perez.
Let's go. I'm going to stay here for longer. Do what? It's not like we're at Hawaii or we're going to the beach. We're at a graveyard staying at home for crying out loud. I'll be thinking, say goodbye. Say goodbye and dig in the car. I'm doing not that. I'm going to miss him. Thank you, Slash. Marching to you and pigeons. So, let's carry on. I'm not that fun. So, we can feed the pigeons. Let's go. This place gets me in the creeps. So, you're certainly in a good mood today. What kind of mood do you expect me to be in? We just finished a funeral. I hate funerals. First of all, I know the person. But they're a part of life. Yeah, so are politicians, but I don't even like them. Martin was natural, didn't he? They had too much rouge on them. People have drunk, drunk coffee and Mildred like Pierce. But natural. That's a stupid statement, anyways. He looked natural? Why do people always say that? It's stupid. Mark's close is better than saying he looked dead. Well, don't say it when I. So? Yeah, yeah whatever. So what do you want me to say? Well, first of all, I'm not planning on dying. But by a chance I do, say, he looked blue, or he looked stiff. Like, just don't say, but you're heavy cremated. You can say, he looked dusty. <laughs> Cares. We're old. We can get away with saying those things. But I'm not planning on dying. I don't guess anybody does. It's part of life. Yeah, you said that. Why are you afraid of so much, man? I'm not afraid. Who said I was afraid? I'm not afraid. Die? So you can't even finish the sentence. I didn't need to. You know what I was talking about. Yeah, but you're afraid of it. Okay, I said you're so smart. How do you know? Mr. Bunny and Females. You bunny and Females is a rush party at the hospital on Tuesday. Well, okay, it's just a habit. Just like you play psychiatrist. Then it happened. You can't get so tight, man. I already stepped in quite a bit. You keep beating yourself, you're going to be two foot tall by spring. What are you so tight about, man? Nothing. Mac? Nothing, I tell you. I don't know what's out there. Oh. Don't start preaching at me, you know. I'm not going to preach at We had this thing when I was a kid. Mr. Mr. McLaren. Old man McLaren, as we kids call it. When we have a story about how we were evil, good things to kids. No one dare cross the stone fence down on his property. If you did, we'd you catch you, pull you in oil, whatever our imagination would come up with. You know how kids can be. I was certain he was the greatest man in the world. Even though I never said a word to him, I just walked so much outside of that fence, we used garden, and we're on the front porch. I'm not certain all the rules about him got started. One thing I was certain about, if I ever crossed that side of that fence, I was certain. <coughs> one day, I was playing in my front yard. I slipped the normal back on my legs. You see, it was so tight, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't yell. Well, I was just about to get my anger. I felt these strong hands lift me up against the road. It was old man Clyde. He uh, saved my life. Took me into his house, laid me down on his couch, and he carried me until dad and the field. After that, every day I found such fun things. You know what I found? I guess, but you can't tell me, right? I found him to be at all. He was just a nice little dude that turned out a little child off. <laughs> Wow, that certainly made my day. A funeral, and that's typically in your life. The point is, the other side of the fence went pretty ominous. We keep the house when you a stranger or a friend. It's all for us. But we get to know him or whether we don't. Pardon me for that. Ah, I see. You slipped one on me, did you, man? No. What? You know what? A sermon. I bet you're pretty proud of yourself, huh? Man, we've been through this stuff a hundred times. Yeah, both of you and Marty gave up on me. Stranger or a friend, huh? I bet you made the story up. I'll think about it. Good. Ready to go? You want to go, huh? Yeah, let's go to the parking lot. Let's go to the parking lot. Do they have pictures in heaven? No, I'm just angels. I got through out of your hands. So, how are you feeling? You startled me. Sorry, I'm not. I thought you heard me. Nah, I don't hear you turn down. So, how are you feeling? With my fingers, how do you feel? You know what I mean. I've had better days. Sit. Don't mind if I do. Woo! I'm pooped. That's a long hallway they got there. Thought about just kicking off my shoes, getting a run to start, and sliding down. It would take a lot less energy. 
How's that what I'm gonna say? Heard from the kids lately? Her boots got a car from Sandy. She's on her honeymoon. What? Again? I thought she just got back. Nah, that was the other honeymoon. What? She didn't write the first time? So she had to find another spot? No, I'm not a husband. This is number three. I feel like she's open up a travel agency. It would save her money in the long run. Where'd she go? I don't know. So e. Bismarck? No. Bangladesh? No. no. Bora Bora? No, I had to take my time with the Eastern Bora Bora. Bora. Curse over there on the piano. Ah, Bermuda. That's it. She went to Bermuda with the town for wonderful. What a long this will last. Didn't do a very job with my kids, did I? Oh, I don't know. There's so many influences on kids these days. It's hard to raise them right. You did okay. Their mother had more to do with that than me. Yeah, I'd do that one too. We both had higher priorities than our kids. Or each other, for that matter. So I could do it all over again. I can't. We can change some things. I mean, we may not make up for the past few kids, but to start, this might send them. Maybe. Do you need one? I need some to chase them. I look at my mission. It's a little scary, you know? It doesn't have to be that way. God, right? Whatever, I'll think about it. Those are the last words I heard him say about the magic. He wants some time to think about it. I got the call the next morning from the rest of the stage and died in his sleep. So many times in the course of our lives, I wanted to come to accept Christ. It was just never the right time. We always saw Christ as an intrusion. An intrusion on our life with plenty of time. Plenty of time. For days I've sat here wondering, did you think about it that last night? And if you did, what did you decide? All I know is that I miss him. And I wonder if I'll ever see him again.
Well, wonderful. It certainly made it look easy, didn't it? But it certainly represents that there was a lot of hard work put into uh, the preparation for this. And uh, I don't know about you guys as well, but I certainly saw that they were enjoying themselves, serving God, uh, which is also representative of what I've gotten to see at Jackson Christian as well, the times I've been able to be over there. So thank you for being willing to come and share your gifts and to invest in us, and especially looking at the bulletin. It looks like you have a good group of seniors who are going to be going out and uh, continuing to serve God into the world and, and also juniors as well. So why don't we give them another hand uh, to show our thanks for that, uh, them to come. Now let me pray for us, and we'll have a, a closing hymn benediction, but let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, um, we're just so grateful for even just hearing those words and know that you sent your son, Christ Jesus, who paid uh, for sin upon the cross, and even to be challenged with uh, representation of conversations can hit us in our hearts to consider ways that we can share this message with others, but also to start in our own hearts so that we don't get caught off guard, that we need to realize, each of us, that because of sin, we're separated from you, a holy God. If there's anybody who's wrestling with that and, and wants to understand what it means to have eternal life, God, we trust that your spirit will work upon their heart, allowing them to turn to you in faith and repentance, turning from sin, to recognize that on the cross, Jesus paid that penalty in full, so we can celebrate like this, to be encouraged by young people who are willing to be used by you. And God, that's our desire as well, that we would continue to recognize our need for you and to enjoy the great life that you've given us. Thank you so much. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.